you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Brandt, uh, welcome. Um, you know, we all know Medicare is the largest purchaser of prescription opioids in the country. Um, I was a little shocked to learn that in a typical year, 2016 anyway, one out of three beneficiaries received an opioid prescription. I'm not a doctor, not an expert in this, but it is just counterintuitive to me that one out of three people needs to be given a drug that is so powerful and so dangerous, but that's the case. It's further even more surprising that Medicare actually pays more on a per patient basis for opioids than either commercial insurance or Medicaid. So it's over $4 billion on opioids alone in 2016. Um, so I really, really uh, wonder about the total consumption levels. I know that um, Medicare and Medicaid have overutilization monitoring systems. And I know there's been some progress with respect to the people that are being tracked, but I am concerned that the overutilization monitoring systems are in fact monitoring a tiny percentage of the people that maybe should be monitored. And I say that because in November of last year, the GAO identified 727,000 people, uh, Medicaid beneficiaries, that they believe are at particularly high risk, 727,000. Um, the OIG uh, determined 500,000 were receiving high dosages of opioids for at least three consecutive months, and this excluded cancer and hospice patients. But the overutilization monitoring system, it's my understanding, covers something on the order of 60 to 70,000 beneficiaries. And I'm wondering if the right number wouldn't be 10 times as high based on the GAO and the OIG uh, reports. So what do you think of the number of folks that are being monitored compared to the number of folks that ought to be monitored? Well, a couple of things, and I thank you for the question because this is an area where we've really been working to improve our oversight and to see how we can address the OIG and GAO concerns. Um, first of all, the OMS system only covers Part D beneficiaries, which is a subsection of our larger Medicare and Medicaid population. Um, so as a result of the OIG and GAO feedback, we significantly strengthened and significantly improved our ability to do um, edits and oversight through the OMS system, which when we re-ran at least the OIG beneficiaries that they had identified, enabled us to be able to show that we caught over 85% of them with our new improved expansion of the system and with the additional edits that we put in place. We've been continuing to implement the CDC guidelines, our new um, safety edits, and a number of other coordination edits to really get at that, but we're looking at how we can expand this to cover the rest of the program. Could, could you send us the backup documentation on that? Because sure, I'd be happy to What I've that. seen, it looks like we're falling way, way short of, uh, of the total goal. Let me uh, go to a specific subset of folks. It's my understanding, anyway, that people who experience a non-fatal overdose, that that experience alone is not a sufficient criteria for being... Um, uh, part of the overutilization monitoring system, that that's not by itself sufficient. But yet, we've had a spike in non-fatal overdoses. Um, my understanding is almost half the time there's a non-fatal overdose that precedes a fatal overdose. So it is obviously a very, very dangerous event. Um, should a non-fatal overdose in and of itself be sufficient criteria for including someone in the overutilization monitoring? Well, um, as I'm not a doctor, I can't speak to whether or not that's an appropriate criteria for us to use, but I think it's something that we want to look at because we consider the continuum of care to be very important, and we want to make sure that there is that coordination. So do you have the authority to adopt that as a criteria? What would it take to adopt, for instance, uh, if it turns out that, that that's a, an appropriate criteria, what would it take to make it the criteria for inclusion? I'm happy to go back and get to you exactly what it would take okay. for us to include that. Um, great, Admiral, did you have any thoughts on this? No, sir, I'd be happy to go back and look at what authorities, but 
uh, clearly a non-fatal overdose is a risk factor moving, moving forward. And uh, a, a true sentinel event, a cry for help, and we exactly. need to be attentive. But to as that. it stands today, that is not a sufficient criteria for being included in overutilization monitoring. And so I'm not a doctor either, but that is extremely counterintuitive. 